No, they're not part of the nine. No. <laughs> um, I was 17. Lawler was probably 40 at the time. <laughs> Mike Campbell, you recognize this, Tammy? Bring it up on the screen. A photo recently surfaced of a letter that you wrote to a wrestling magazine saying that Marty Jannetty was the most gorgeous guy in the world and that you wanted to marry him. Did you get a chance to propose when you were both in WWF? There's the actual letter, Tammy Sitch, Old Bridge, New Jersey. Um, tell us about this. You're how old? I liked you before this. What's, oh, you the, totally the, the, just bring my that reputation. up. Come on, what a find! Look at this. I was probably like 11. Okay. okay, so it's cute. It was not the TV stations by you know where I lived by, first just started carrying AWA wrestling, mm -hmm. you know. So I was like, ooh, new wrestling for me to watch. And out come the Midnight Rockers, and I was like, ooh, who's the guy with brown hair? He's so cute. So instantly I was a Marty Jannetty fan. Then I was watching a little bit more. I was like, hmm, I kind of like the blonde one better. So instantly I was a Shawn Michaels fan. He's one of the nine. He's one of the nine. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I was a little kid and I wrote in. It doesn't say I want to have sex with him. I was Nobody 11 years old. Nobody said that. I was just curious if he was married. I was 11. It's I didn't even remember cute. this until somebody showed it to me a couple of years ago. I was like, oh my God. Well, let me read this actually here. Let's go a little further. Um, I'd never been interested in the ADWA until I saw Marty Jannetty. I think he's the most gorgeous guy in the world. Problem is, I cannot find any centerfolds, articles, or color posters of him. He never in any got his publicity. Magazine. Please tell me if he's married. I hope he isn't because I want him. Eleven. Eleven. I hate you. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. At least it was clean. I was a good That's girl. True. Was. Well, after might have cleaned it up. I don't know what was in there beforehand. <laughs> Slick Chris, thoughts about hosting Livewire, working with Todd Pettengill. We're really going to answer this? All right, go ahead. Uh, Todd Pettengill was cool. Livewire was fun. <laughs> Pat Mustard, Ireland. I like that answer. Is there any truth to the rumor that the reason they started WWF Livewire was because the event center had a table in front of the host yeah. so fans couldn't see Todd, ben Todd Pentagill's constant erection he seemed to have when the two of you were on screen together? Um, I, I didn't make it a habit of staring at Todd Pentagill's crotch. You're kidding. I swear. Can you imagine that? No. But I don't think that was the reason. I think we had a console in front of us because we had to read from the computer questions that came in from the fans. Magic J247. Uh, how was it working with Vince Russo before and after he became in charge of creative in the late 90s? <sighs> we had our battles when he was in charge of creative. Uh, I never had really had any contact with him before that. But when he was in charge of, charge of creative, um, See, Vince was very cool with me about my photo shoots and about what went in the magazines on the website. He would always let me pick my shots. Well, when they came out with the Raw magazine, with I remember it was dual covers. I had one cover and Sable had the other cover. Um, I went in there and he shows me the picture he's going to use on the cover. I was like, the hell you are. I mean, I always tried to keep that all-American girl image, you know, girl next door kind of thing going on. And the picture he chose of me, I was on my hands and knees in the, you know, in the ocean. And the look on my face was like this. It, it was basically saying, here, put your cock there, you know? <laughs> and I was just like, um, no, you're not going to print this on the cover. He's like, yes, we are. I've already made the decision. I'm like, oh, really? You broke into WWE headquarters with your pass key, and you took the fucking picture, no. didn't you? I stormed down the hallway to Vince's oh, office, right. blew open the door, said, Vince, this is fucked up. He's like, well, what's the matter, Tamara? Because he always called me Tamara. <laughs> what is the matter, Tamara? So I said, well, Vince, and this is the problem. He's like, well, I'll put a stop to that right now, Tamara. You have no worries. So we went down to creative, and Vince said she will pick the picture she wants on the cover, and that's my final decision. So Russo was totally shot down because mm. Vince let me have creative control once again. So we just butted heads like crazy after that. Very good. Mike Campbell, 411. What are your thoughts on Jim Cornette? Specifically, the fact that he likes to refer to you, albeit in a complimentary fashion, as an out-front cunt. As yep. opposed to Sable, who's an undercover cunt. Exactly. Was Sable an undercover cunt? And I think you've answered that already. Yes, because she likes to come across as like, you know, I'm the, I'm the good one with class and, you know, poise. And no, she's an undercover cunt. She's got all evil things going in her mind. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I'm the out front, out front cunt and I get respected for it because I basically, I will tell you how I feel. Like, you know, there's, there, even on like Indies Now, for example, guys will come up to me and say, can you watch my match? I'm like, yeah, sure. After the match, they'll say, you know, what'd you think? And I will say, dude, it fucking sucked. Quit right now. You know what I mean? But at least I'm honest about it. I'm not going to say, oh, it was the greatest thing I've ever seen when they actually sucked. Um, that's always been my problem. I've always, I've often been called the Jim Cornette of females. Because I have diarrhea of the mouth just like him. Well, mm. look, look who was my mentor. Where do you think I learned it from? 
So, um, but yeah, I will just come out. It goes from brain to mouth with no filter in between. Um, so yeah, I've been quite the at front, at front cunt at times, mm -hmm. but damn proud of it. Ed Farnsworth, ever party with Ric Flair? Not with him, but near him, yes. Um, Ric Flair is completely the nature boy on the road at all times, 24 seven. Remember the one instance, um, we were, I don't remember where we were with WCW and uh, we all hit the lobby bar after the show and there's one table still empty and it has a reserved thing on it. Like the rest of the tables in the bar area was just open. Probably about an hour after we're all in there and everybody's got a couple shots in them, everybody's feeling good. Um, here comes Flair with three women on his arms. They sit down at the table. Waiters come over with a bottle of wine in front of each girl, an entire bottle for each girl. And Flair's tapping on the table going, whoo, that's right, I'm the nature boy, whoo, because he's proud he's got three girls and a bottle of wine for each of them. It was hysterical. Everybody was busting up laughing. It was great. But so he is, I never partied with him, but I watched him. He's crazy, out of his mind. Shawn Michaels. Uh, Ray Tan Jr. What That's a whole really chapter? Whole oh chapter. my God. What really happened when Shawn Michaels got his ass kicked in Syracuse by one or six Marines? Uh, did you really have to take him to the hospital? I wasn't there to witness the fight. I was told by numerous people it was a group, it wasn't just one. Um, don't know how many exactly there were. Um, yes, I did have to take him to the hospital. Um, Sean's room was right next to the room that Chris and I were in, in the hotel, and about three o'clock That's in the a bad arrangement, considering the situation, <laughs> I wasn't with Sean yet. Oh. Okay, I wasn't with him yet. Um, three o'clock in the morning, there's a knock on my door. I open the door, it's Davey Boy. I'm in my plaid Victoria's Secret PJs, and I'm like, what? And he starts laughing at me because I'm on my pink plaid PJs. I'm like, what's the matter? He goes, you, you have to come next door. Sean got beat up, and he's all messed up. I'm like, Christ. So I wake Chris up. I'm like, oh, let's go next door. So I just walk right next door. Sean's on the edge of the bed, and he's literally like wobbling, half in a coma. His face is like the elephant man, all you know, swollen. Gash under his eye, gash on his head, and he's bleeding from his ear canal, from the inside of his ear. I was like, all right. I sent Chris back in the other room. I said, call 911. We need to get an ambulance here. He's got to get checked out. The facial stuff I wasn't as worried about because he, but he was so out of it and he was bleeding from mm -hmm. inside his ear. I'm like, let's get him checked out. So I rode in the ambulance with him to the hospital. Um, Chris followed us in the, in the rental car, uh, but none of the boys that were there with him for the fight at the bar came. They all went to bed. And a couple of them went back out drinking. Yeah. Nice guys. But uh, so, you know, we went, we took care of him. I made sure I ordered a plastic surgeon for him in the hospital to stitch up his face because, you know, his looks, you know, part of his image. He's, you know, can't be all scarred up. Um, ordered the MRI from check out his head. I said, you got to check him out. He's been bleeding from inside the ear. So, you know, took care of him. I took his diamond earrings out of his ear so nobody would steal him. Just, you know, I was just being. That's very nice, nice of you. You know, three o'clock in the fucking morning. If I were him, I would have taken you on a vacation for that. He did. I know. Imagine that. <laughs> so after that, yeah, he, um, he went home and, you know, was taking some time off and I was calling every day to make sure he was okay. We were having these long conversations, getting along great. His mom would pick up the phone. She was, you know, help taking care of him. And I would talk to his mom for an hour on the phone. And then one day, uh, you know, I said, you know, you, uh, I think you need a vacation. You've been on the road for so long. You really deserve to like pamper yourself for a little bit. He was like, okay, where do you want to go? I was like, we, where do I want to go? So that was kind of the beginning of everything. How, you, how were you able to just get away like that and be like, okay, bye, I'm gone for a week? I whatever. used to be a very good liar. Yeah. Mm. Said I was going on a spa retreat for myself. But even work. I mean, you were on the road all the time at WWE. You were allowed to just go on a I, spa retreat? I got time off. Yeah. Yeah. You did or someone requested for you? Like Sean? Pulling I don't. Your I think he might have requested. Maybe. I don't remember, actually. All right. Very good, Ramsey. Um, okay, let's just, again, a long one, so let's just watch the clip from our show. Our friend X-Pac returns with this. Anyways, her, she dips in the little private room there. And one of the guys we were talking about, who kind of had a scruffy beard at the time, was in there and he was kind of a member of our little group, the clique, and, uh, um, and so I guess somebody was supposed to be watching the door. No, I'm not saying that. I, mean, I don't know. I know who was watching. I can't the door. remember. It could have been. Well, well he's here, isn't he? Someone go get Kevin. Four, it could have been one of four it people. It was Kevin. Okay. And <laughs> one was in the room. The fucking, it wasn't let me you. get to the fucking good part because I'm really like, I'm drawing this thing out so much here. Um, 
anyways, I guess, you know, I guess Chris is coming around the corner and everybody's like, bam, 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 on the door. And all of a sudden, fucking shot, I mean, uh, one of the guys fucking the guy. Guy comes out of the room and he's got that fucking fuzzy beard and there's fucking that fuzz from the sweater all over it. And it was fucking <laughs> absolutely, I guess, you know, you had to really be there. But no, I'm right? enjoying it. You really had to be there. But even like telling it secondhand is pretty fucking funny. You remember the fuzzy sweater? Okay, this is a true story, but he, he has it a little twisted there. Okay. Um, yeah, Sean and I were in the midst of our little relationship, and I was wearing this short, white, tight, little Angora fuzzy sweater. Mm -hmm. And it was like a little midriff showing, and it was skin tight, and it was, it was like a creamy color. It wasn't quite white. But, you know, Sean and I used to find our little rooms and closets and empty locker rooms and whatever was available. You were very resourceful. <laughs> yes. Look at you. <laughs> but, okay, so, but at this particular time, not, we were just kind of like hanging out. I was, you know, sitting on his lap. We were, you know, kissing, cuddling up, whatever. Nothing crazy was going on at this time. But it wasn't that anyone was coming around the corner and we couldn't be caught. It was just we had to both go work. Mm -hmm. So that ended it. But we didn't even realize this. As soon as we walked out the door and Kevin Nash was the one watching the door, he looks at him, he goes, Shin, because everybody called Sean Shin back then. He goes, Shin got a little evidence on your face, just like that, because his scruff was filled with, because he was like burying his face kind of in my, yeah. So his beard was covered with the white fuzz from the sweater. <laughs> it was hysterical. So here's me and Kevin trying to pick out all the fuzz, because it would have been a dead giveaway. It was funny. Were you falling in love with the Heartbreak Kid? No. No, we had a lot of fun, but that, that was, was pretty much it. Hmm. Ed Farnsworth, did Vince know about your romantic relationship with HBK? Yes, mm. he did. Because we used Vince's locker room a lot, too. Wow. We did. And Vince was like, be my guest. He was actually, he, he was never one for intercompany relationships back then. But, hell, when his top guy and his top girl, you know, were getting mm. together, he had no problem with it, no issue. And uh, we always, I always had a feeling he knew because, he, you know, Vince. But I knew he knew this one time. We're on catering line. I was on catering. Sean was right behind me on catering. We're getting our food and Vince walks up behind us. He goes, so how are we doing? <laughs> Just like that. So right there, I was like, we looked at each other like, oh yeah, he definitely knows. Wow. <laughs> but I know he never, never gave a shit. He was, he didn't mind it at all. Horsecock Express, Tammy, did Shawn Michaels have as many problems with his dick in bed as he does with his back whenever he needs to lose a belt? <laughs> That's a good question. There's Sorry, no honey. answer for it, though, right? No, he did not have any problems. <laughs> Sam, I don't know what to hi, who, that. who was a better worker, Shawn Michaels or Chris Candido, uh, if you had to choose one? Worker. You know what? I, that, uh, you can't ask me to answer that. Come on. I mean, they both were incredible in their own ways. Seriously. I mean, I have said, even on my Hall of Fame speech, I did say that, you know, Shawn Michaels is the greatest performer that ever stepped in the ring, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I always stick to that because, you know, no matter if we are getting along or not getting along or what, you know, I'm like I said, I'm brutally honest, and I'll always say, you know, that. So, Salvatore, there is is a picture of yourself and Shawn Michaels reunited during the Hall of Fame weekend, the year he was inducted. Did you think to yourself, what the fuck happened to your eye upon seeing him for the first time in a while? Well, that wasn't the first time I saw him in a while. The first time I saw him since I left that company was the 15th anniversary of Raw show in December of '07. That was the first time I saw him. And I was actually, I wasn't nervous at all going to that show. The one thing I was nervous about was seeing him because I didn't see him since I left the company. You know, we weren't getting along when I left the company. So I was like, oh, I wonder how this is going to be. And I was on catering once again. Mm -hmm. And I feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around and it's him. And we're like, nose to nose. I was like, Ugh. I was like, hey, how you doing? He gives me a big hug, hello. And he's like, oh my God, you look so great. You look exactly the same. I'm like, so do you. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you know? That was nice of you. Though, but I, him I put him over and said, you look great. So we had a nice little chat. And um, I go to sit down at my table. My ex that, thank God, I'm no longer with was already sitting down eating. Who comes over to join us for lunch? Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels. <laughs> so tell me about awkward. So I'm like, oh, God, I haven't seen this guy in 10 years. And now he's sitting down to have lunch with me with my ex there at the time. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, this is a mm. mess already. <laughs> but it was nice. It was a nice little, you know. Everything was fine. Everything was cool.
Missy Hyatt. Oh, uh, do we have to go there? Ron Paulus. Back when you were involved with Wrestling Vixens, there was a story you circulating a question. on the internet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That you and Missy Hyatt made an appearance on the Man Cow Radio Show, uh, not only to promote the website, but also to reveal your plans to do uh, a hardcore adult film. You said you were considering it during your web chats for the site. Uh, was the story a publicity stunt to get more members for Wrestling Vixens, or were you actually thinking about going hardcore? I do remember doing the Man Cow Show. He was a real asshole. Um, I wasn't the one who said anything about a hardcore adult film that was missing. Okay. She, because she always tries, tries to egg people on and tries to make shit up and just tries to put you in a bad position. So she was, she would be like, Tammy, just tell Man Cow you want to do a porn tape. I'm like, um, no, I don't. If anybody's going to do it, it's you. So, you know, in that Missy Hyatt, I'm from Florida. I have a drawl and I have about the IQ of a balloon. So, uh, yeah, it was really, really bad and I just could not wait to get out of that. That radio station. Wrestle Bunny has sent us this. Hi Tammy, this is Wrestle Bunny. And I have a question the for you. The blonde snooky. I wanna know, do you still keep in contact with Missy Hyatt? If so, what have you been up to recently? Okay. What was that last question? Uh, what, is, what has she been up to recently? Um, I'm not normally in touch with Missy Hyatt. I haven't been for years. Um, I parted my ways with her years ago for good reason. Um, but before I went into rehab, I actually did call a few people just to kind of make amends and let bygones be bygones. She was one of them. Um, only talked to her for about three minutes on the phone. You know, we kind of made peace with our past. Never said I wanted to be her best friend. Never said I even wanted to be friends with her again. Mm. I, I just wanted to say, yeah, I just said to her, I said, listen, I just, anything that happened with us in the past, let's let it go. Let's be civil, you know, move on from here. And she was receptive to it, got off the phone on a good note. She's been calling me quite a bit since then. She even called tonight when we were at dinner, <laughs> which was completely out of the blue. But, uh, you know, yeah, I don't have, I'm not in touch with her, okay. but, you know, if, if I happen to pick up the phone, if she calls, you know, I'll talk to her for a couple of minutes, but it'll never be a friendship like we had years ago. Mm. No. Tyler, Tammy, what is the story behind and your feelings on the picture Missy Hyatt released of you giving a guy a blowjob that she says she took of you? I have no idea even what that is. I've heard about that too and I have no idea. I've never seen anything and I don't recall in my lifetime her taking a picture of me giving any blowjobs.